Okay, so today, yeah, we will cover the chapter uh, 1.3 about the vector equation, but still, we are uh, handling the same problem of uh, set of, yeah, solving a set of equation. But we, yeah, from today, uh, we will start to learn a different perspective. I mean, uh, viewing the set of equations quite uh, from a different perspective. Uh, as a vector space or kind of a matrix, yeah, kind of thing, yeah. Or, although we already formed the matrix and then I did some uh, row reduction or row operation to obtain some echelon or reduced echelon form, but now uh, using the exact same matrix, we will uh, study uh, different ways of an understanding and solving these equations. <clears throat> so now, uh, the title, as the title says, we talk about this uh, vector equation. So you guys know the vector, and yeah, um, which is uh, different from scalar. Scalar is just a single value, and the vector is a set of those numbers. But these are kind of ordered numbers. And then, <clears throat> yeah. So in this case, so w, for example, can be two comma three, and this is a vector, right? And then. You know, this is uh, something like two comma three as a point, and then in this vector, right? Okay, and then throughout this class, I mean, uh, all the time, we will use this uh, bold case uh, letters uh, to denote the vector. Okay, so if you see this kind of bold face ones, uh, you can think of it as a, a vector. Yeah, so, um, so just a plain font, not bold, ca uh, bold face, it's just a scalar, okay? Uh, but the, these are all in a lowercase, lowercase letter, but uh, as you will see, this kind of capital letters will represent the matrices. This is our kind of notations. Okay, <clears throat> and then um, each of these two-dimensional vector is belonging to this R2, which is like a little bit weird character, right? It's not, it's a more bold, right? So, yeah, it's uh, composed with the two lines, right? Something like this. So it means, <coughs> yeah, entire set, I mean, universe set of two-dimensional vectors. And each of vectors are all real values. Okay, so we can think about the complex numbers, but uh, at least in this uh, class, we only uh, talk about the real, val real value. And then uh, the, this r means a real number, and real number to the uh, power of two, which means uh, we handle uh, yeah uh, a set of two values, which means a two-dimensional vector. So. Every vector in two-dimensional uh, space uh, can be written as a uh, element uh, belonging to this entire set. <clears throat> okay, and then two vectors are equal uh, if and only if uh, their corresponding entries are equal. So, for example, two comma three and two comma three. These are the exact same vector, right? But what about this? Is this the same or not? So this is different. So we have to have exact same entries in all the um, all the positions in our vectors. Okay, and then uh, we know how we compute the summation of the two vectors. Two comma three plus one comma four is what? Three comma seven, right? Okay, and then uh, we handle this uh, scalar multiple of uh, vectors. So three times one comma four. So this is a scalar and this is a vector. And so what is the result? Three comma twelve, right? So we do this multiplication 
in each of our element in the vector and then this one can be written as this c times u so c is a small scalar but u <coughs> in bold face is a vector just like a 1 comma 4 okay then we can compute this of course right <coughs> And then uh, we can think about the ge uh, geometric description or geometric point or this kind of uh, a vector, right? In our two-dimensional space. It can be three-dimensional or much higher dimensional. <coughs> and then this uh, universe set that contains all the possible uh, real value 2D vectors. I mean, if we collect all the corresponding points, and then it will um, it will fill up entirely our sp uh, two-dimensional space, right? So yeah, <coughs> and then this is a parallelogram rule. You guys know that, right? So if we add the two vector, and then suppose this guy was two comma two, and this guy was is uh, four comma one. And then, uh, as you answered, this uh, the u plus v is six comma three, but geometrically, we think of this uh, parallelogram, right? And then, starting from a uh, origin, we have u and v as a point, and then we form the parallelogram, and then the the fourth point or fourth uh, vertex in our parallelogram is uh, corresponding to the addition of the two vectors and their point. <coughs> okay, and then we can of course think about R3, which is a three entire uh, universe in three-dimensional space, and then Rn uh, as well, when we have n entries in our vectors. <coughs> Okay, so there are um, many properties uh, that are true. So u plus v, v, v plus u is the same. Uh, what is this rule called? Gwanbob chik. Gwanbob chik What is a gwanbob chik in Korean? Uh, sorry. <laughs> in English. Eh? Yeah, commutative law. Commutative law. Commutative law. Commute. Yeah. So this uh, this word is. What's the meaning of it? Yeah, we go back and forth. For example, to or from the school or to my company or my office, right? We go and then uh, come back, right? So our commuting time is a uh, one hour per one. Yeah, for one way, one way means uh, yeah, it takes about an hour. Yeah, to go to our school or office. Okay, and then uh, so yeah, it's like a uh, uh, yeah, going and uh, coming back. And so that's yeah, that's why we have like a uh, switched order. I mean, uh, when they were switched between them, and then uh, it's uh, still true. And then this guy is also true. <clears throat> what was the the law corresponding to associative law law associative law okay then yeah what what is it in Korean okay and then uh, this guy is just yeah uh, the same uh, so here yeah this is so trivial but uh, this one is actually, uh, this one has a little bit incorrect part. Can anyone tell me what is the incorrect part? So we add zero to the vector u. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He gave a right answer. So, so we saw this kind of example, right? You guys know how to do this addition. But what about this? Or what about this? 
can we uh, do this calculation or this computation? This computation is not defined. So you might think of it as like a 4 comma 5, but it's actually not true. So we didn't uh, define this kind of a, a addition. In the case, when we have a two different, uh, the dimensions are different, and then, yeah, we cannot uh, do DM addition. Although, we define this, right? Um, yeah, we define this, right? So scalar uh, times uh, vector is defined, but the scalar plus vector is not defined. And also, similarly, 2 comma 3 plus 1 minus 1, 0. So if the dimensions are different, it's also not defined as well, right? So <clears throat> this 0, which is written in a plane, uh, not in both phase, is, uh, is, it means a uh, scalar, right? So it has to be like this kind of a bold phase. In that case, if we uh, use a bold, a bold phase 0, and then it means a 0 vectors that has the same uh, dimensions. <clears throat> okay, and then, yeah, we know this, this, this. <clears throat> okay, so here's another error. So this one should be vector 0, right? 0 vector. And this, yeah. So C is uh, uh, something like 2, and then D is maybe 5, and U is 2, um, 3. Okay. In that case, we first multiply these two before applying the multiplication to this uh, vector. And then here is uh, 1 times U, which means uh, yeah, scalar multiple of 1 uh, of a vector is the same. Okay. Then now we think about this linear combination, which is uh, the most important concept and the notion uh, uh, in this class, because <clears throat> it contains the the word linear, and uh, our uh, class is a uh, linear algebra. So this linear combination is really really important concept. Okay, so it's uh, quite simple. <clears throat> so you are given vectors like a v1, v2, and vp. And then you think about their uh, linear combination, which means you, um, you multiply some scalar on each vector, and then you just add them up. <coughs> so, yeah, so it, uh, one example is this. So I'm going to give you two vectors, 1, 2, and minus 1, and 3. And then I'm going to give you two associated, uh, let's see, okay, I'm going to give you two scalar associated with the first vector as um, maybe three, and then the second one as maybe minus 2. And then you think of this 3 times 1 comma 2 plus minus 2 times minus 1 times 3. And then yeah what is the number? Can anyone answer? It's 5, right? And then 12, it should be 0, right? So we multiply these two, and then these two, and then do this addition, right? Okay, so this is a, a one example of a linear combination of these two uh, vector. Okay, and then this weight, uh, which is uh, this guy, of uh, 3 uh, minus 2, they are, yeah, call this a weight in this uh, linear combination, and then this number, yeah, this weight can be any uh, real value. 
and also it can also be zero. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, let's uh, think about the linear system. Okay, that we uh, learned in the previous chapter. So, but uh, we our approach is from uh, different angles. So uh, let's look at this example. Suppose we are given these three vectors, a1, a2, and b, and they are all column vectors in three-dimensional space. OK, and then the question is uh, to determine whether this b can be generated or written as a linear combination of a1 and a2. OK, so let's think. Uh, Think, yeah, think about this example again. So 1 minus 2 minus 5, and we have 2, 5, 6. And then what was the linear combination? <clears throat> we multiply each of these vectors with some scalar value, and then we add them up. But here, uh, we do not know those two values yet. Okay, But we can still, yeah, although we yeah, we do not know these values. Uh, that is uh, called as a linear combination. And then the question is, can we make uh, this linear combination as the same as 7, 4, minus 3? OK? So the question is, does, uh, yeah, suppose this value and this value as small x1 and uh, small x2. So they are in plain font, so they are scalar. Okay, so does uh, x1 and x2 exist that satisfies this equation? And this equation is the same as this equation, right? Okay, so there is uh, another incorrect part. So this should be um, uh, boldface B, right? Excuse me? Three times a1 vector plus two times a vector equals b vector. Mm. Is it right? I mean, yeah, you guys can verify that it, yeah, if that is true. But here the question, yeah, here our task is to find out x1 and x2. Okay? And sometimes <clears throat> those two values uh, may not even exist. Just like uh, the case where we, uh, we have no solutions in the linear system. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so let's start yes, yeah, start from this vector equation. So this is called a uh, vector equation because it's just an equation, right? So we see this uh, equal sign and then it's composed of a vector, right? Then uh, we can write it in this form and then we just yeah, let's just uh, rewrite it by just uh, this distributing x1 to each entry and then uh, we write it in this manner and the second one will become this guy and then we can just uh, add these two vectors in this form right it's uh, so simple right and then we now have this equation starting from this <clears throat> and then <clears throat> in this vector equation 2 comma 3 Suppose, suppose we have this kind of equation, and what should a be? a should be 2 and b should be 3, which means we have to satisfy um, the, the equality on every element, right? So it means this guy should be 7, this guy should be 4, and this guy should be minus 3. Okay, now suddenly we uh, obtain a set of equations. So we have three equations, just like uh, uh, what we saw in the previous chapters, right? So that's, uh, uh, that's why this uh, vector equation is related to uh, linear systems, okay? <coughs> okay, so in this question, uh, we have to uh, obtain the solution for x1 and x2 that satisfies this vector equation. But uh, that is the same as to find uh, the solution satisfying these uh, three equations or these uh, set of equations, right? 
Okay, and then the remaining, yeah, the rest of the story is the, still the same uh, uh, as you did in the homework. So we form this kind of augmented matrix by just, uh, yeah, bring those uh, 1, 2, and 7 in here. Okay, and then we change it or convert it into reduced actual form. And then uh, uh, we obtain the solution in this form, right? And then uh, we can verify that by just uh, plugging 3 and 2, which we obtained from this augmented equation, I mean the augmented matrix, and it's a reduced echelon form, right? And then uh, we can uh, verify this original vector equation is still true. Yeah, it's uh, quite obvious. <coughs> and then, so if yeah, if we remember how we can yeah how we uh, formed uh, this uh, augmented matrix, and then we did uh, yeah we did uh, this kind of operation. We first combined yeah from here yeah we uh, distributed the x one and x two into the vectors, and then we added um, and then uh, we uh, listed uh, each element's equality condition right. But uh, we can just uh, skip this process. And uh, let's think about where uh, 1, 2, and 3 came from. These uh, values came from those values, 1, 2, and 7, right? And the next row is coming from minus 2, 5, and 4, right? And so on. And so this augmented matrix is just nothing but Concatenation, I mean horizontal concatenation among these three vectors. So that way, this is our A, and this uh, A1, A2, and this is B. Right? So that's one simple way of uh, obtaining augmented matrix from uh, the um, uh, vector equation. We just uh, simply uh, concatenate the vectors horizontally. And that is uh, exactly the same as our uh, augmented matrix from this set of equation. <coughs> okay, and then uh, yeah, we can simply uh, write in this form, and then these are the bold face le bold face letter. So this one is actually having this vector. <clears throat> okay, if we have an n vector, then uh, we can still write this uh, augmented matrix in this manner. <clears throat> and then, yeah, here is a uh, also really important concept called span. So I'm gonna rewrite it as span. Span, yeah, it's a really important concept. And uh, let's uh, let's find out uh, what that is. So span means. Okay, so <clears throat> so back to this question of a vector equation. We are given these two vector a one and a two, right? And then we we think about it's a linear combination, right? Using some uh, weight values, right? And then we are given this b. And so uh, this uh, equation is uh, yeah can be thought of as okay we uh, yeah we ch carefully choose the linear combination weight like a three comma two right that was our solution so we carefully choose those values so that the resulting vector from these uh, linear combination of two is the same as b right so <coughs> geometrically. Suppose the first vector was this guy. And then I'm going to give you the second vector as this. Okay? So this guy was maybe 5 comma 1, this guy 1 comma 2. And these are our a1 and a2. And I I'm, I'm going to give you b. b is somewhere here. Like 7 comma 4. Okay? And then uh, <clears throat> the linear combination coefficient or weight that we have to obtain uh, can be viewed as 
kind of parallelogram using those two vectors to satisfy this one uh, uh, becoming as our fourth uh, point in the parallelogram. Okay. <clears throat> so let's think about some parallelogram. Okay. Even though we uh, we may not uh, satisfy uh, this yeah this situation uh, at first. And so uh, yeah, it's a geometric kind of a, a way of an understanding. And then uh, uh, I'm gonna give you x1 and x2 as one comma one, which means x1 times uh, five comma one plus x2 times one comma two should be the same as seven point four. But uh, let's not think about it yet. Okay, and then let's just uh, freely. Uh, yeah, freely explore or, or yeah, freely uh, identify what the, the resulting vector when changing x1 and x2. So in that case, that value will be here, right? And then what about 0 0.05 and 1? And then it will be Something like this, right? And then we can also extend it in a, a minus direction. So it's like uh, here and uh, here, and this is a uh, so this is a coefficient or weight minus one, and then this is one. And then we will have this point, right? Okay, and then even before. We think about this value even even before considering this uh, b value that we have to satisfy. We can think about all the possible fourth point in our parallelogram by freely changing x one and x two values. Okay, and in that case, uh, what would uh, we obtain? I mean, uh, if we collect all these points, and then it will be just uh, this kind of 2D space, right? If we collect all the points by freely changing these two, okay? And then uh, in this uh, 2D, 2 dimensional case, it's uh, quite trivial, but uh, let's think about like a three-dimensional case. So I'm, I'm gonna use my fingers. So I'm gonna give you, yeah, so, is, so here is the uh, origin, okay? So my uh, yeah, chunk of a hand is uh, origin. And then this is a uh, one vector that I gave. And then, this is the second vector that I give you. So this is a, a, a1 and a2. And then, let's think about all the possible linear combinations by, by freely changing those x1 and x2. In that case, we can still draw the parallelogram here, or two times this vector is like here, minus directions as well. And then if we collect all the points, what would that be? It is the uh, it is this kind of plane, right? This kind of plane, right? That covers those two vectors. Okay, and then it's time to think about the B. So B is inside of this plane, and then it means those two x one and x two of our weight values exist. So it means we can find some values that uh, makes this as a kind of a par uh, parallelogram and its fourth point, right? But what if the b vector is outside of this plane? Can we find uh, x1 and x2? The answer is no, it's impossible because we already considered all the possible linear combinations by freely changing x1 and x2 by using these two given in vectors, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> those two vectors and then their uh, uh, yeah the combinations uh, the set of all the linear combinations that we collected and then forming those points as kind of a plane and this plane is called span because span is uh, like uh, we stretch out some uh, elastic yeah some rubber kind of yeah, type of material we can freely span it right and then 
we only yeah we span it unlimited unlimited um, uh, directions i mean uh, yeah and then yeah we can imagine uh, the um, unlimited uh, kind of planes by using those two uh, uh, initial vectors of span and so <clears throat> yeah back to this uh, equation this vector b belongs to so it's uh, so still those two are vector and then the span means it's a collection of all the possible points of a linear combination of a1 and a2 by freely changing x1 and x2 and then if b belongs to this set and then uh, we can definitely say uh, our equation has a solution but uh, if we yeah uh, if b is uh, outside of this plane and then uh, we can say that uh, uh, there is no solution okay so that's how we can relate uh, this kind of geometric kind of a perspective with uh, solu yeah, the, the solution of linear system. And then, <clears throat> so you guys uh, uh, studied uh, like in echelon form, if we see all zeros and uh, the less than non-zero rows, and then uh, it's equivalent to the case where we have no solution, right? And this is the exactly the same as B is not in the span of a1 and a2 okay and then uh, there was three cases no solution and a unique solution and then uh, infinitely many solutions and then uh, how can we think about the uh, infinitely many solutions in this kind of parallelogram kind of uh, geometric uh, sense so suppose um, yeah, I'm gonna give you another vector from this okay so we are gi initially given these two vectors x uh, a1 and a2 and then I will give you third vector and then third vector is uh, something like this okay something like this so <clears throat> so in this case the span of these two vectors are this plane but this plane already covers the third vector okay in that case uh, let's pick up one point belonging to the span of these three okay so this point can be I mean the parallelogram can be formed by using these two vectors right and then also by using the other two vectors we still form the parallelogram corresponding to this point right? <coughs> and that means uh, how we stretch it or the weight so weight means uh, how we extend or like uh, shrink this original length of the vector, right? And then uh, the, the length value or that weight value can change because suppose this, uh, in order to make this point, this was uh, stretched two times, this was stretched by one times. And then the corresponding solution is two comma, one comma, what? This was not used at all. So the weight value associated with this vector is zero because we didn't need this. <coughs> okay, so yeah, back to this uh, class uh, slide the material. Yeah, we uh, learned about the span, right? And then span. Formal, yeah, the formal definition of the span is the collection of all the possible vectors that are the linear combination of a given vector v1 through vp. <coughs> okay, and then uh, this uh, span, I mean a uh, geometric uh, example is if we are given just one vector, not just two, only just a single vector. And then uh, if we consider it's uh, all the possible linear combination, and then it will be just a line, right? We can just uh, stretch out freely only this vector because we are only given one vector. And so the span will be, so this is originally or initially given vector v, and then span of v is just this line. 
Then the second example is uh, the same uh, example that I uh, where I used uh, my fingers, and then uh, we have these two vectors uh, u and v as two vector, and their span is all the possible points in these uh, parallelogram that we can create using these two vectors. Okay, so that way this kind of plane will become our span of uh, u and v. <coughs> okay, so that's it for uh, chapter 1.3, and then let's move on to chapter 1.4. So in the previous chapter that we saw, uh, we learned, we studied the vector equation, right? And then uh, we know, we now know a vector equation is the same as a linear system, right? And then we will, uh, it's, uh, yeah, now it's the time to learn about the matrix equation. Okay? And this matrix equation is uh, nothing but just a um, yeah, matrix representation of a, a vector equation. So, <clears throat> in this example, these set of equations is the same as this kind of vector equation, right? And then this vector equation can actually be as just, uh, yeah, can be uh, written in a simpler form. And then how we can do that is, <coughs> so let's try to use this example. Then we focus on this part. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, we focus on this part and then try to rewrite it in a matrix and vector form. And the answer is this. It's uh, really simple. So we just uh, write the um, coefficient matrix. Okay, so this is uh, the first vector and the second vector coming from here. Right? And we just uh, form the one single matrix by using uh, a set of vectors that we are given. And then Okay, then we form this uh, matrix vector multiplication. And this is the same as x1 times 1 minus 2 minus 5 plus x2 times 2, 5, 2, 5, 6. Can you verify this is true? Yeah, if you uh, like compare uh, the um, element-wise uh, computations from this matrix multiplication, and then uh, you guys will see <coughs> these are the same as this, right? So it's like uh, kind of factorization. So factorization means you guys know x squared minus y squared is the same as x plus y times x minus y. Right? It's just like uh, this kind of factorization. And uh, these two are the same. <clears throat> okay, so initially, suppose we are given like uh, three vectors. So in this example, we are given two vectors and one uh, constant vector, right? And then we are given maybe three vectors. And then um, how we form this uh, matrix vector uh, multiplication form is we just, yeah, we have one vector and the second vector and the third vector. Or let's use a different color. This guy. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, a1, a2, a3, those are vectors, and x1, x2, x3, and these are scalar 
right? And then this whole representation is re yeah can be written as one single matrix that has these three columns, and then what about this part? This part will be x1, x2, x3. Oops. That comes from each of these uh, linear combination weights, right? So initially, a uh, linear combination weight is a scalar, but the, by collecting them and then forming one single um, uh, uh, vertical vectors, okay? So that way we can form this uh, matrix vector multiplication, okay? Okay, so that is uh, this. Uh, yeah, that is uh, what this uh, what this page of a slide is about. So, <clears throat> just like this, we have these vectors, and then we now have a scalar values that came from each of the linear combination coefficients, and then. It is actually the same as the vector equation, which means the linear combination of the given vector. So this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Okay. Okay, and then <clears throat> we can now call this entire matrix as A. And now our linear combination coefficient is called x. But now x is a, now a vector, right? Now we have a one single vector and one single matrix A, okay? That collects all the uh, given vector A1 through AN. And then from here, we have to satisfy this linear combination to be same as this uh, vector b. So this one should be our vector b. Right? And then all together, we write this part a times x. So this is a vector, and this guy is b. Right? And so this is a big matrix and then uh, we have a vector x and then we have vector b <coughs> okay and then uh, yeah let yeah let's exercise yeah let's uh, let's think about some following exercise uh, suppose we are given three equations and two unknowns or two variables, and then what is the size of a matrix X? What is the size of a matrix X? How many rows in X A? Hmm? How many rows? Do we have three, right? So yeah. So let me just give an example. So um, three x one plus two x two equals five minus x one plus three x two equals one, and then. Uh, 2x1 minus x2 equals 3. And then what would the a be? a will be 3 and 2 and minus 1 and 3 and 2 minus 1. Right? And what would the x be? So this is a original uh, vector. And then uh, vector x is formed from x1 and x2, right? x1 and x2 and then what is b b will be 5 1 3 okay so the size of an a 
will be 3 by 2, which we have uh, 3 rows and 2 columns. And then uh, vector x is a two-dimensional vector, which is the same as our number of variables. And then b is three-dimensional vector. So b is three-dimensional vector. So b is, I mean, the, the dimension of b is the same as the number of equations. Okay. So we can think of it uh, as a uh, in this manner. So, <clears throat> so we have a two-dimensional vector, although we uh, we don't know what that is. But uh, we are initially given this uh, two-dimensional vector x, and then our matrix A is kind of doing some function, or it transforms some two-dimensional vector into some other vector. But now A is the size of 3 by 2. So it's transforming, or it converts, two-dimensional vector into some three-dimensional vector. And that three-dimensional vector should be the same as our given vector B. Okay. So here, what is known and what is unknown? So A and B is given, and then we have to solve uh, the vector x. Okay, so that is like uh, uh, solving uh, solving some value that is a uh, that is that can be viewed as a kind of inverse of the function. Okay, okay so okay, so this this is the definition of this uh, matrix equation. Okay, this is nothing but just a more, uh, I mean, simpler, simpler representation of our set of equations. Questions so far? <clears throat> okay, then, yeah, let's think about this example. We are given x, uh, v1, v2, v3. And then we think about this linear combination. And then uh, let's change them into matrix vector form. And then we have v1, v2, and v3. And then we bring those linear combination coefficient into here. And then we form this vector, right? OK, and then this one will be our matrix A and vector x. OK, and then. Suppose we are given these two linear uh, equations, and then we can first change it into a vector equation, where we have 1 times x1 and 0 times x1, and then we bring those vectors as just the first vector, and then 2 and minus 5 as the second vector, and then minus 1 and 3 as a third vector, and then now x1 and x2 and x3 are our unknown or variable. And then in the b part, they should be uh, 4, 1. So this is a vector equation. <coughs> and then now we can change it into just a matrix equation as well. And uh, um, yeah, obviously, this uh, three versions of uh, equations, like a set of equations, and then vector equation, and the matrix equation, all of them should have the same solution, right? We just uh, converted the one to the other, yeah, by yeah by using some correct uh, yeah correct relationship, right? So they should all have the same uh, solutions. Okay, so that obvious kind of fact uh, is described in this uh, uh, theorem three. So this kind of a, a matrix equation can be uh, transformed into this. Uh, uh, vector equation, and then the solution for e either of these two is obtained by solving this augmented matrix and then uh, yeah, transforming it to uh, a reduced echelon form and so on. Right? So even though we can view a, a linear systems as a vector equation or matrix equation, the actual uh, process of solving the solution, I mean, uh, I mean, how to solve these uh, systems or these uh, matrix or vector equation is uh, still the same. So you form this augmented matrix and then do exactly the same as that um, uh, uh, reduced echelon form. Okay. So the remaining process, uh, there is no magic. So you still have to do exact same thing that you did in the in your homework. <coughs> and then. Um, Let's think of yeah. Let's learn about this theorem four. 
And uh, this is a little bit non-trivial, but if you understood the notion of uh, span, uh, it should be easy, hopefully. Yeah, let's, uh, let's read through and try to understand this theorem. So theorem 4 is the initial situation is, so we are given A of a size m by n. Then those four uh, statements, basically all sentences are equal, which means they are logically equivalent and which means they all have the same fate or same destiny. So that means if one is false and then the other three is uh, false as well and uh, if one of them is true and then we can automatically say that the other three is also like the true. Okay, So they, uh, in that sense, they share the same destiny. So that that's the meaning of this uh, logically logically equivalent. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So in this, uh, yeah, mm. yeah, in this theorem, uh, the point is, point is this, point is this uh, previous example that we discussed. So we are given, for example, two vector. And then think about the span, even before thinking about a particular b, right? So again, we do not think about b yet in uh, our linear system. We only think of these uh, given uh, vectors that we can use. And then uh, suppose we are given two vectors, and then we think about all the possible linear combinations, and that is called what? That is called the span, right? We kind of stretch out all these vectors in uh, all the possible directions, right? So we think about this span, right? And then we now think about this B, and then uh, if, depending on whether this B is inside of the span or outside of the span, it determines whether we have a solution or we have no solution, right? Now, <clears throat> we kind of do, um, in, um, we now, um, yeah, we now think about uh, um, a little bit easier situation. We think about easier situation again, and then depending on B, I mean, we are not happy. I mean, uh, because depending on the B, uh, we may have solution or may not have a solution. Okay, so now in order to make the situation easier, we want to we want to guarantee, even before seeing uh, what the b is, even before checking out b. So yeah, yeah. Keeping that in mind, let's read the first sentence. For each b in R M, the equation has always a solution. And here, yeah. Please note that this doesn't mean that we have only one solution. It means we have at least one solution. Okay. So it didn't say it has exactly one solution, right? It didn't say in, it didn't say that way. So it means uh, uh, we have uh, at least one solution. And then <clears throat> for any b, for any possible b in our space, okay? And that yeah, in in those situations, we can always guarantee that our matrix equation uh, has a solution, okay? And then. This situation is exactly the same as our span of the, the given vectors are already covering the entire spaces, all the possible uh, value of, uh, uh, all the possible vector of B. Okay? <clears throat> okay, and then uh, we actually uh, uh, saw this example in uh, previous, yeah, in the previous, yeah, uh, previously in the lecture today. So let's try to find out where it is. Um, okay, it's so a little bit dirty, so let me just. Okay, let's think about two-dimensional space. 
Okay, two-dimensional space, and then we are given two vectors. Just like this and this, which is similar to this example. Okay. Okay, so this is a 5, 1, and maybe it's a, a 1, 2. And then we are handling two-dimensional space, right? And then we are given these two vectors, and then let's think about the span using those two vectors. And then it will cover the entire two-dimensional space, right? <coughs> so in this case, <coughs> Are we dealing with the, I mean, uh, what is the dimension of uh, vector b that we are dealing with in this situation? Do we, uh, do we consider like a three-dimensional vector or four-dimensional vector? We only hand, yeah, we only think about two-dimensional vector in this case, right? Why? Yeah. So if we recall or remember how we form the vector equation and where uh, did these, where did uh, where did the, these two vectors come from? Those came from some equations. x1 plus 5x2 is something. And then um, 2x1 plus x2 is something else, right? And then we extracted out those 1 and 2 as the first vector and 5 and 1 as the second vector, right? And so it means we have two equations, and thus our b vector is also composed of two values, right? So we uh, think about only the two-dimensional vector, of course. So that is quite obvious, right? And then in this uh, two-dimensional vector, there is no way for this vector to escape out of the span of these two vectors because if we uh, think about the span of these two vectors in the um, two-dimensional space as our universe, then it already covers our universe space in two-dimensional space, right? So there is no other points uh, that can be outside of this span, right? Does it make sense? But what about uh, the two vectors in now in the three-dimensional space, okay, <clears throat> just like this uh, finger case. So our three-dimensional space is like uh, this uh, three-dimensional space, physical space, and then we are given two number of vectors, and then for example, this vector can be one comma two comma zero, and this vector can be maybe three comma five comma minus one. But anyways, these two are just two vectors in three-dimensional space, right? In this case, the span of these two will only cover only the subset of our three-dimensional space. So that's why we leave those uncovered spaces, right? And so if B falls into this region outside of this uh, shallow or thin plane in three-dimensional space, and then that's when we have no solution, right? Okay, so it means, I mean, uh, in order to guarantee that uh, we always have at least one solution, regardless of a b value, and it means our span of these a vectors. <coughs> okay, <And> then <coughs> you probably now understand the meaning of a, right? So we are handling such kind of situation uh, where uh, for any b value, regardless of what the vector b is, our uh, equation has always at least one solution, right? And then uh, let's look at the second sentence. Any uh, vector b, any vector b, I mean, uh, regardless of what vector you choose as b, that is always represented as a linear combination of the columns of an A. So it means, so we have an A, an X, and B. And then we have maybe four vectors in A. And then <clears throat> the fact that we have a solution, at least a one, uh, have a one solution, means this B falls into the span of column vectors in A. 
right? So we are given two vectors, and then uh, when we have a solution, I mean that situation is equivalent to the to the case where this vector b can be always represented as a linear combination of these two vectors, right? Which means this guy is belonging to the span of these two vectors. I mean, I'm saying the same thing that I uh, mentioned uh, pre yeah, previously in the chapter. Okay, and then the, the second one, I mean the third one is the columns of a matrix A spans Rm. So we didn't pay much attention to the size of an A. Suppose A was 4 by 3, for example. Okay, and it means we have four equations and three unknowns, right? And then in terms of a vector equation, we have uh, three vectors, right? <coughs> and then these uh, uh, these three vectors are covering R what four because what is the dimension of vector B is four right so the vector B is living in four dimensions and also each of the vector in A is also living in four dimensions right and so four dimensional vector from A, I mean we have three vectors, and then these three vectors are spanning, I mean the span of these three vectors are covering the entire space, which makes it impossible to place B outside of uh, the span of columns of an A. So A, B, and C are exact, yeah, saying the exact same thing. And then <clears throat> the last one is the most important and a little bit tricky one. A has a pivot column in every row. A has a pivot column in every row. <clears throat> so that means, so let's think about the um, echelon form. And then suppose we uh, obtain the um, augmented matrix. And then this augmented matrix is nothing but the horizontal concatenation of A and B. And then Let's think about we uh, change it or convert it into it into an echelon form, and then uh, let's call that as U and D. Okay, and then uh, here, the last item is saying that all the pivots, I mean, in every row, the pivots are placed in the U part, but not in D part. So that's the meaning of this A. Matrix A has a pivot position or pivot column position in every row of an A. Okay, so we already created all the pivots in this U part, which makes it impossible to have a pivot in D. And that is the same as, so if A doesn't have a pivot, and then we would see all zeros up to this point and then some non-zero value in D part. And that's when we have a pivot outside of A, right? So in that case, we know this is a, this doesn't have a solution, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to continue uh, explaining uh, just a little bit more about, about this, okay, next time. So, yeah, that's it for today and thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
왜냐하면 이 차원에 있는 어떤 포인트도요. 이두 개의 리니어 커뮤니션, 이두 개를 잘 이렇게 저기 조절을 해갖고 길이 언제나 그 벡터를 그 점을 만들 수가 있는 거죠. 그러니까 이거는 솔루션이 항상 있는 케이스예요. 그럼 어떻게 차에서 어떻게 벡터가 주어진 솔루션? 아, 그거는 이두 개의 벡터가 예를 들어서 벡터가 하나만 주어져 있어요. 네. 하나만 하나만 주어져 있으면 이렇게 그렇죠. 주어져 그러면 있어요. 하나밖에 없으니까 당연히 네. 그럼 없죠. 근데 그 경우가 어떤 경우냐 생각을 해보면 A가 이제 2차원 벡터예요. 네. 2차원 벡터라는 건 이퀘이션이 두 개가 있었다는 거죠. 그렇죠. 근데 벡터는 하나밖에 안 주어졌어요. 그러니까 배리어블은 혹은 우리의 변수는 하나밖에 없다는 뜻이에요. 그러니까 이퀘이션 두 개, 배리어블 하나. 이러면은 일반적으로 안 되죠. 그러니까 그러면 여기서는 어떻게 볼수 있느냐. 이게 하나밖에 없어요. 예를 들면. 이 하나의 스펜은 주관 떡 깨나도 이 라인밖에 안 돼요. 라인밖에 안 돼요. 그러면은 조금선이 없을 때도 있고 네, 없을 때가 많겠죠. 네, 그 하나 더 있는데 네. 3차에서는 언제 솔루션이 없냐고요? 아니요. 인피니트 솔루션이 없다. 네. 그러면 그 지금 이게 똑같은 얘기인데 그게 전체 집합이 다 되어버리면 네. 어떤 비가 들어와도 비가 스팬 바깥으로 도망갈 수가 없다는 라 이야기가 아, 스팬 그러니까, 전체가 되어버리는 거예요? 네. 그러니까 스팬이 전체가 된다는 라 이야기가 아, 알겠습니다. 줄석 종류 이름이 뭐예요? 비껴서 신이성이요. 네. 이다. 안녕히 계세요. 제가 봤을 때 대로 설명하신 거 네. 아까 저기 질문하셨던 것처럼 2차원에서는 네. 어떻게 했던 그 저, 비가 무조건 그 스팬 안에 있고, 존재, 그, 해가 존재한다는 뜻 하잖아요. 그러면 그건 이 차원에서 어떤 벡터들을 그 1차 결합 하면 무조건 그 평면이 스팬이 되기 때문에 무조건 어떤 벡터든 간에 비가, 비가 어떻든 간에 어떤 뭐, 네. U나 U벡터나 B벡터든 간에 그 벡터가 뭐든 간에 무조건 다 해가 어떤 경우에도 존재하는 거예요. 네. 그게 맞는데, 네. 그러니까 운이 안 좋은 케이스는 뭐냐면 이 차원에 있는데 두 개의 벡터가 주어져 있어요. 잠깐만요. 내가 조금 이 종이를 좀 먼저 좀 할게요. <웃음>